all right what is going on i am super super excited for today i have been pumped i i you guys know i did a short 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 podcast on wednesday normally i do my podcast at one o'clock every wednesday we go for about hour format but this week if you guys listened i'm in austin texas and i'm going to do kind of like a podcast-a-thon i'm doing uh you know i did the short one on wednesday we got today and i got two of them tomorrow and dude I, I, I'm, I'm just excited. I, I, can't, I can't explain. We're, we're live right now. We're live on Instagram, uh, live on Facebook, on Myler Flex Instagram, and the Next Rep Fitness Facebook page. And who I have sitting next to me is someone that I've just totally, totally uh, respected and wanted to meet for the longest time. Today we got to go get a workout in at Gold's Gym, and uh, I, I'm just excited. So we got Logan Delgado, a.k.a. Goody Beats. What's goody people man, What's goody, man? Man. we woke up this morning we're winning yes 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 we are winning i love it when you say that <laughs> dude I, I i'm in austin i love austin you know um the the thing about austin that it's just it's so cool there's so many things to do here um it's progressive people are just always open to new ideas new things um so that's awesome that you, that you live here for one um you know there's a lot of a big keto community that it's lives huge. here it's you huge know? man keto keto's obviously growing like crazy all over the country but i feel like austin is is trying to take the flag and being like the keto capital <laughs> of the united states and uh yeah no it's cool man austin is a beautiful beautiful city one thing about texas guys if you don't know texas we're very friendly people mm -hmm. obviously you know that and uh texas we're known for our barbecue so oh yeah we're definitely trying to become the keto capital of the world <laughs> for sure yes you know i told my wife i said the only thing that would just the cream of the crop because the reason why i even came to to austin i live in dallas for a lot of you people that are are watching us right now that follow goody and, and don't know myself I, I live outside of dallas texas i own next rep fitness uh, right next to love field airport and um, I told I told my wife I was, I was like okay so I'm coming down here for a, 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 a event called Design Your Life. Yep. It was hosted by Gary Vanderchuk, Aubrey Marcus, which is also the owner of Onnit Academy here in Austin, and there's some other guest speakers and stuff. So I came in last night. I listened to Gary V, got hyped and enjoyed it. Um, listened to Aubrey Marcus, and then later today at 12 o'clock till 8 o'clock tonight, I'm going to be there working with those guys as well. And so I told my wife I was like you know what. But when I go down there, I, I've, I'm just doing it. I've got to reach out. I've got to reach yes. out to, to to Goody and to Whitrock, and you know, I just got to see what 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 can we do. And that, uh, then I said, you know what? What would just be the cream of the crop for me? Just because <laughs> right now I'm just like over the top with this, but. I'm a huge Blue October fan. Uh huh. I don't know if you know who they are. I do. Out of San Marcos. I do. Justin Furstenfield. He's a good friend of mine. <laughs> Dude, you would. I, I never miss a concert. My tattoo. I knew it from the start. My wife and I actually our anniversary is here in another week. And we got it last year. She got the same thing right here on her arm. It says, I knew it from the start. It's a lyric from Blue October. I said, that would just top everything off. If I could go to Starbucks and have a drink with Justin. Yep. I, I would just, <laughs> that would do everything. So anyway, if you're friends, we got to make I'm, this happen. Hey, I may after this, we may have to make some phone calls. Let's oh, see if we can, see if we, we can I, meet him. I may have to ditch my event for yeah, that. <laughs> I, it's very possible, man. He's a good dude. Very down to earth. One of the chillest guys you'll ever meet, man. Man, I've only gotten to uh, meet him at like one of those little meet and greets in vegas yeah it's funny i always we always run into uh, him because he's from st marcus yeah we always run into him at target really yeah i always run into target so his wife um went to high school with us are so you we're serious yeah, so we're very good friends okay <laughs> I, I i see there's my wife right there she's what yeah. are you hearing this right yeah. now we can make it happen i'm sure i can text some people oh can, man yeah that would be that would be great i know that's not fitness related yeah. but dude dude let's let's make that happen all right man. so oh man where where to start you know um i i one of the things that i wanted to to talk about was with the reason why i 
really enjoyed your 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 content and what you're about. Um, also, kind of give you some of the story about myself and my background because you know we I mean we really just met today for the first yeah, time. Yeah. Um, you know I've kind of interacted with you on Instagram here or there, but today is our first time that we really met, and uh, I I've, I haven't really put myself out there much on the social media world when it came to, <clears throat> to keto and stuff. And so I kind of want to start off with my timeline of how everything got started with me and yeah. how you got intertwined into that mm -hmm. and, how, and where we are today and uh, where the future may be, where the future is, is going to go with keto. I love it. So um, I, for, for you guys that may not know who I am, my name is Cody Myler. Um, again, I own Next Rep Fitness in Dallas, Texas. I am a former college basketball player, college coach. Uh, I moved to, to Texas in 2004. I coached at Jacksonville College in East Texas from 2004 to 2007. I've always been into more of the performance of things. Yes. Um, I, I never, even though it, it, you know, it, the aesthetics and the looks came with, uh, you know, just working your ass off hard, you know, and the performance with basketball and everything. That wasn't my main focus. My main focus was how high can I jump, how fast can I run, you know, you know that, you know, all that good stuff. So when I left and I got out of, out of basketball, and basketball is my absolute passion, it's, it, it's my love. And um, when, when I got out of it, I moved to Dallas, and I was like, during my time there, I was also the strength and conditioning coach too. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I said, you know, what am I gonna do? So I had all my NESM certifications, um, the CSCS and everything, and so I said, okay, I'm gonna go train. And in my eyes, I felt that uh, I would go work for a gym and they would just give me people and I would just, just train the hell out of them and, and everything. And I didn't realize working at a corporate gym, you're basically a used sales car salesman and you got to walk people up to the floor and cold calls all the time and hey, do you want to drop you know $2,000 today for personal training? And I was just like, this is not my yeah. mojo. I mean, I ended up becoming a fitness manager, but I, there was a guy, he was an amateur MMA fighter, owned a business in Deep Elm in Dallas. And he said, Cody, you've got to get out of here. You got to do your own thing. And so... Uh, he gave me a spot for free, and I, I shit you not, it was probably the size of two of these offices. That's all it was. Wow. Um, and he gave it to me for free and said, if you train me for free, you can have this and then start your own deal. And at that time, I was 27. And, and I was like, okay, all right, let's do it. So I, I quit my job. I took a part-time job at Dick's Sporting Goods and to get equipment at yeah. a cheaper price. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so I started Myler Fitness Private Personal Training Boot Camps. All the way, built, 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 kept on going right. And then in 2012, I started my own school um, that I, now I teach the NESM certification. So Next Rep Fitness Academy. And that's when I took my name off of the business and we opened up Next Rep Fitness. Yep. It's a gym, 9,000 square foot gym, open 24-7. And um, during this process, I was, I was training a guy. And one of his, he's a lawyer, and one of his clients had a, like an energy drink supplement. It was kind of like a five-hour energy. Mm -hmm. and they called it MVP, Minerals, Vitamins, Protein. Mm -hmm. And they, they said, hey, Cody, you know, this would be a great opportunity for you. They already had another another uh, product out selling at all the 7-Elevens and everything. And he said, this would be a great opportunity for you to, um, you know, we'll let you be the spokesperson of this. And they had a contract with Walmart. They had a contract with like a huge, um, some, some grocery store in Mexico and stuff. And I was like, okay. And they're like, we want you in the best shape possible. I said, all right, let's do it. And I had about three months before that, the, uh, because it was going to drop um, January of 2000, uh, let's see, 2015. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, Call one of my buddies. He's a trainer. He he uh, competes and everything. And I said, dude, I need that extra push. Yep. I paid him, you know, like five hundred dollars a month to drive from Fort Worth to come meet me three times a week. He did my meal plan. So we did. I mean, I not only had to build muscle, but also lose body fat at the yep. same time, which is 
hard if, if people that have very tried hard. doing that it's very hard and I had a three month window to do this I was eating 5,500 calories a day working out three and a half hours a day it was miserable and then not to not to add on the cost of just all the food and yeah. supplements and everything I was doing so and you know all of a sudden I remember it was December 15th I get the phone call and he tells me that CEO, uh, the, the CEO of Walmart left and they got a new CEO and he's putting a pause on all new products coming in. Oh, and that that they don't know if they're going to move forward with MVP. Yeah. And I was going to, like, it was going to be awesome. I was going to have like this kiosk cut yeah. out and all this stuff. So that really put me in, in, in the dumps. Yeah. That, that really put me in the dumps. And then at this time, now we went and expanded Next Rep from a 4,000 square foot to the 9,000 we moved. So really my mind was just focused on the gym. Mm -hmm. I, I got so burnt out and eating all those calories and, and just working my ass off. So then um, 2014, I, again, I'm a big basketball guy, and I've always felt bad for leaving basketball. It's always been in my heart, but this, it came, it came back. LeBron James, when he left Miami and went back to Cleveland, his trainer, I'm in a lot of these basketball uh, forums and then also another uh, private group, and his trainer put out a deal about how he put LeBron and Carmelo Anthony on a keto diet. It was, it was a, a, a slash keto paleo diet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he put that on there. Now, prior to that, about two years prior to that, I have some people that are close to me that they would always say they're keto and they're in keto. They never said that they ne never really said they're in, in a, uh, doing the keto diet. But they always would say, I'm in ketosis. I'm in ketosis. And they're eating nothing. Their whole every breakfast, lunch, dinner was bacon, eggs and cheese all over it and i was just like there's no way like the and, and i was like that's not healthy and i just i'm not lying i was the guy that was like i don't know about this keto thing so when that article came out of lebron james trainer and what he did and the the process and the foods i was like hold up that's interesting now that was in 2014 and i started from that point I, I didn't look at like YouTube. I didn't look at you know social media to go learn about keto. Yeah. I I was I kind of like did the Thomas DeLauer deal. I went into the books. I went into the studies, yeah. and I started learning more about. It. So fast forward a couple years later, it still wasn't really that known until about yeah. two, 2016, right? And uh, I wanted to be with more people in, in the community you know and like I was telling Goody earlier the keto community reminds me if you if anybody out there are jeepers out there and you got a jeep every time somebody watch, you know drives by you got if you don't put that jeep wave up you're in trouble all right <laughs> and but but I'll tell you if you get a flat tire if I go on North Texas Jeep Club on the Facebook page or whatever somebody's going to come and they're going to get me yeah. I mean if you remember those floods that were in Houston there are tons of videos of all these jeep guys out there pulling people out that's because awesome. I'm telling you it's a tight group yeah, and that's, that's awesome. what that's why I've, I've gotten to know and feel with keto yeah and so I wanted to start a group and I just put a little page on Facebook called keto cut and I, I started meeting people so this trainer at my gym he was a huge Chris Jones fan and he knew before that I was I was doing keto and I, I was learning about it more and more and he goes hey Cody man you need to watch this guy right here. Here's some keto guy right here on this uh, on with Chris Jones. And I'm like, all right, who's this? So now this is about summer of 2016. Yeah. And I, I watched a guy named Goody Beats. And I'm like, okay, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna follow this guy. And so from 2016 to today, I've been following you and watching everything that you've done through keto and the the um, the passion that you have. Um, you know, the one thing that I've done, uh, I, I've tried to really, because in the fitness community, it can be very egocentric and, oh, yeah, and people absolutely. cocky and stuff. And that's one thing that really drew me towards you, not only just because of keto, which when I think of Goody Beats, I think of the top three things. First, positive vibe. Positive, um, always doing everything right. That's number one. Um, number two is going to be keto and the passion and trying to get the word out about it. Uh, and, and, and Well, actually, I should probably knock that down. Mm -hmm. Positive vibes, your family yeah. too. 
keto three and then fitness four yep. as far as workouts and you know that type of deal so that's how when i when i think of goody that's how i really think you are yeah you know i i i know that you you love keto and everything but those are those other two stack above yeah that. those things are absolutely come way before keto like i'm a big advocate of keto everybody knows that i love the ketogenic diet it's done wonders for my life it's not only changed my life like physically but just like everything like everything about my life like Everything I, the reason why I'm here with you, yeah. doing this podcast with you, is because of keto. Yeah. Right? So it's done so many wonderful things for my family. And uh, like I said, I, I mean, I'm a big advocate of the ketogenic diet, but first and foremost, I will always say this I am a proud father, proud husband, and proud son before anything. And I, I like I said, I love keto, but that's not what defines me, right? Yeah. Being a father, being a good person, spreading positive vibes, always being grateful. Every morning, everyone's always saying, goody, goody, like, why are you so happy? Like, what do you, come on, man, why are you so happy? It's like, dude, could we woke up this morning? Like, yeah. you, know, you woke up this morning, We everybody takes everything for granted, right? Like, being able to just get up, walk out of bed. For people who don't know this, I have a brother who has several palsies, so he'll yep. never be able to walk, uh, he'll never be able to do anything on his own. You gotta feed him, you gotta take him a bath, you gotta take him, like everything. Mm -hmm. He'll never be able to do anything on his own. But he's the happiest person you'll ever meet. Always smiling, always happy. And so, to me, it's like, how can I complain? Yeah. Like, oh, I don't wanna get out of bed. Oh, well, you know what? There's people in this world who will never have the opportunity to have a choice to get out of bed. So, I better get my butt out of bed, be happy, take advantage of these 24 hours that we're, we're, we're granted, right? And make the best out of it. So that's why, that's where my positivity comes from. It comes from my family. It comes from motivation from my brother. He's like my inspiration, you know, always happy, but he'll never have the opportunities that majority of the people listening to this podcast have. Mm -hmm. So think about that. You know, you gotta think about that and be grateful. Yeah, yeah. yeah definitely, definitely. Uh, so over over the last few years, what are what are some of the key takeaways that you've learned through your process of keto that you wish, hey, maybe I would have changed before that I'm doing now? Uh, you know, what what are things that you've done? Yeah, so like in the beginning, I was on like almost a therapeutic type of ketogenic mm -hmm. diet. I remember, I was overweight, guys. For people who don't know my story, I was overweight. I was 225 pounds. I was pre-diabetic, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, taking Crestor medicine every month every every day to bring down my cholesterol and um you know discovered the ketogenic diet and I, i'm trying to lose weight like i'm trying to get healthier right yeah. and uh so doing that I, I lost a total of 70 pounds got back in shape no longer pre-diabetic no longer having to take crestor no longer high blood pressure so my ketogenic diet changed right like i lost that weight so now I wasn't so scared of protein like I was in the beginning. Like mm -hmm. I gotta be in ketosis. I gotta keep the protein low. You know, yeah. just always being scared about things, right? And now it's like I live a very, very flexible keto lifestyle. You and I talked a little bit about this on the way up here to the office. You live a you 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 do a very strict ketogenic diet. Yeah. I, I would say it's probably a little bit more stricter than most. Yeah. And uh, and me. I, so for me to do the ketogenic diet, I made it a lifestyle, right? It's mm -hmm. a lifestyle. So like for instance. Moments and opportunities don't ever, don't ever, like they won't ever not happen. Like the diets never come before moments and opportunities. And what I mean by that is if it's our anniversary, me and my wife, if it's my mom's birthday, if it's my dad's birthday and they pick somewhere where there's not really that many ketogenic options, yeah. I'm gonna enjoy that moment still. Yeah. I'm gonna enjoy that opportunity that I have with my family. And I'm not gonna stress about yeah. a diet. I'm not gonna stress about being knocked out of ketosis. I'm gonna have a beer with my wife. If yeah. I wanna have a piece of cake with my wife, it's okay because you know what? I'm in this for the rest of my life. Yeah, no, so absolutely. when you take a step back and really look at the broad picture, one little piece of cake is not, no, gonna, not no. gonna mess me up for my lifelong journey, right? Yeah, no. And so that's what I want people to realize because I get so many DMs like, Logan, I had a cheat day this weekend. Like, what do I do? How do I get back in ketosis faster? Like, what's the what's the quickest way? Do I need to go on a 48 hour fast? Do I need to go zero carb? Do I need to have a full body workout? Do I need to take yeah. these, uh, a BHBs? It's like, dude, first of all, don't panic, Hispanic. I love panic. it when you say that. Panic. I was waiting for you to <laughs> yeah. say that. Don't panic. And, um, everything's gonna be okay like just just relax like yeah. you're gonna be okay because the way I look at it before I started keto and before I got into a, a, the healthy lifestyle I was eating buffets drinking 
Coca-Colas, eating candy, you know, just eating like crap every single day. Yeah. All right. And 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 me having one meal that that's bad really take a step back. That that's pretty good. Like, yeah. You know. Yeah. So that that's what I would take back. I, I wouldn't be so stressed out about it and and really look at it from like, hey, this is a lifestyle, yeah. lifelong journey, not a well, I got. I got six weeks to hurry up and get shredded. Like, yeah, know. yeah, no. And that, e even though I say that it's strict, like what I do and stuff, it's still very, I'm still flexible in that mm -hmm. aspect. It's just like my Monday through Friday, I try to be as, as good and stay to sure. my macros as much as possible. But then also just like, you know, in like the last year, now all the options that you have, like, oh, hell, I, I even brought you some, some keto it's, bagels, it's funny, you know, man. it's funny. I say this all the time, dude. So like when people are starting keto, I'm like, Oh, you know, no, you knew keto dieters got it so many oh, nowadays because yeah. back in 2014 and 15 when I started, yeah. there was no keto ice cream, no keto bread, no keto cookies, <laughs> no keto anything. So whatever you muffins, like all this pancakes and, and all this stuff that people have nowadays, like yeah. there was none of that back yeah. then. Like you uh -huh. just had to just suck it up and be strict. Yeah. So I kind of joke around with that whenever I, I hear new people starting the keto jig diet. I'm like, I'm like an old timer. You know? I'm like old school. <laughs> I totally, totally hear you on that. Um, you know, and then, then other people, they, they still don't understand that, you know, it, it is sustainable. It is a lifestyle. Like I, I really don't see myself. So when I got, so back to kind of where I was with keto and everything, I, uh, in 2014, when I started learning about it and then my wife and I, we got married and about three months before our wedding, we went on keto and, and lost some weight and stuff. But from our, from when the time of our, our wedding till about last summer, honestly, I really, I, I, my main focus was on the gym mm -hmm. and just getting that thing going, you know, you know, training my people. I wasn't necessarily worried about myself and my health. And, and so I was in Vegas last, last summer and I actually ran into one of my old players that I coached at mm -hmm. Jacksonville. And I'm like, Michael, what's up, man? And I took a picture with him. And when I got home, I, I just looked at it and I was like, Cody, man, you let yourself go. You cannot yeah. be a guy that owns a gym mm -hmm. in fitness and everything. And so I said, you know what? It's time to, to you know, do what I preach. And I, before that, for years, I've been putting my clients on keto and doing all that. But I didn't want, I, I didn't want to work out prior to that because the 5,500 calories I, I was eating before, the three and a half hours I had to do before. And that just made me just go, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. So then when I said, okay, time to get on it so for the last six months i've been what they call the skd strict keto diet mm -hmm. um i i was at 255 pounds at 24.9 percent body fat and that's off of dexa so it wasn't one of these little handheld deals um and so i went and i started eating 2,000 calories a day really low i did a little experiment on this i ate 2,000 calories a day um and I fasted for a minimum of 12 hours every day, only for the reason to raise my human growth hormone. That, that is, that's, the, that's why I did it. Um, totally was in ketosis, I mean, a high ketosis for those six months. So three weeks ago, I did my DEXA scan again. I'm 226 and 19.1% body fat. Um, but with that process, I also gained another two and a half pounds of muscle, yeah, oh, which yeah. being at, I also did the BMR mm -hmm, test. Mm -hmm. And so naturally I burn about 2,300 calories a day. And then you add my exercise, I'm about 34, 3,500 a day. Mm -hmm. So I was in a huge deficit. So to be in a huge deficit and still gain muscle was, it, it's kind of, that's probably remarkable big yeah, <laughs> yeah, to get two is. and a half pounds of muscle. And so I was like, holy shit. So this fasting deal really, I think, triggered that human growth hormone yeah. a lot. I love fasting, man. I fast every you single day. You go extended. So yeah. It, it, yes. It, so for those of you who are thinking about getting into fasting, you got to find what schedule works best for you. For me, I, I'm not one of these guys who wakes up in the morning and just hungry, right? I just, I don't, I'm not naturally hungry. So my window is from 12 to 8. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. You Most people can make it to lunchtime before they have their first meal. And then you just have your last meal at 8. There you go. 16 hours. Um, as I kept doing that, it just kept getting easier and easier to go at 19, yeah. 
20, 21. Now, a lot of people are like, wait, wait, whoa, 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 when they would see me go like 22 hours, they're like, wait, you only have a two hour ending window? No, that just means that I, I start eating and sometimes maybe it's a four hour window, maybe it's six, I don't live by a 24 hour clock, you yeah. get what I'm saying? So, so let's say I, I fasted for 23 hours. I don't give myself an hour to eat. Mm -hmm. yeah. like I, yeah. I could eat for the next four hours, you know? Yeah. So no, I'm a, I'm a big advocate of fasting. I love it. Even if you don't do keto, I think fasting is just so healthy for our bodies. Uh, to give our bodies a break, like eating every two to three hours is not natural. That's not how we evolved. Right? Exactly. Our ancestors didn't just go to the pantry and be like, hey, I'm bored, or mm -hmm. you know what, Iron Man's on, so I'm gonna go make some popcorn and pickles and watch yeah. it. No, man, they went to go hunt, after they hunt, they ate, and maybe they last, and maybe that, that food lasted them for about a day, two days, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I, 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 man, I, I just, I love fasting, like I said, at the end of the day, I think fasting's so beneficial, help, grow, uh, help repair your cells, growth hormone, um, just, also mentally, mentally mm -hmm. challenging yourself to say no because majority of the time, guys, I promise you, it's not that you're hungry, it's that you're bored. Yeah. That's the problem and you need to ask yourself, am I hungry or am I just bored? And when you really step back and think about it, it's like nine out of 10 times, I'm bored. Yeah. That's just nothing to do. I'm sitting around like, I might as well eat. Yep. Yep. So. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. So now, after the three weeks ago, after I, I, I did that experiment, now I said, okay, now I'm going to bump my calories up to 3,500. But I tell you what's made this, this, this whole keto journey so much more enjoyable for myself compared to when I did the old Western bodybuilding style. A, I'm not eating all the damn time like I was. I'm not eating those 5,500 calories. And I literally work out an hour and a half. I was So for the last six months, I was working out an hour and a half, five days a week. I didn't work out on weekends. I did four days of, of, of weight training and five days of just list cardio, 40, yeah. 45 minutes of cardio. Um, now, since my wife and I were doing this deal called the 75 Hard Challenge, so we got to work out every day, twice a day. We're really strict and everything. So that, right now, I'm probably even more stricter than ever. But yeah, we're doing seven days of workouts. Um, but now I'm, I'm, I'm bumping it up to 3,500 calories a day. So I want to see what that looks like to see, you know, if if my if my muscle is if I want to pack on more muscle with yeah. added calories. Um, but it, it's just been. Before that, that whole mindset that I had of just like I don't want to do this. I yeah. don't want to put myself through this. And then once I got the, the ball rolling and seeing how much easier, and then my performance, you know, I track all my numbers of, of my yeah. weights and stuff, and just seeing the strength of just you know, because when you're when you're eating keto, you're taking so much of the amino acid leucine, and that's a huge muscle sparing uh, uh, amino acid that that really preserves muscle and helps yep. you grow yeah and you can see that with all the numbers that, that i'm doing right now yeah. it's pretty pretty remarkable yeah and it, it, it it's remarkable right and people still nowadays you tell them you do keto and you're a bodybuilder or you train you know you're a trainer they're like oh no dude you're gonna lose your gains you're gonna you're gonna yep. lose your mass you're yep. gonna lose your strength and i'm like dude do you follow me do you watch my youtube channel i'm not losing any strength i'm not losing any, i mean i don't think i'm losing any mass uh, yeah so yeah no it's one of those things like you know like you just i think we're so brainwashed like but carbs 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 you need carbs mm -hmm. you need carbs and uh it it isn't until you actually see it and you know somebody yeah well i know goody personally and i see the way he trains i yeah. see the way he eats every single day so yeah that that's definitely and not that's true. that's exactly what's happening at my gym you know because i even at my own gym, for years when I say that I, I, I coach people on keto and then I, I'm keto, I still got people that love me to death, but they're like, whatever, Cody, yeah. man, whatever. Yeah. And now we're six months, seven months down the road, and then they're like, so tell me a little bit more about yeah, what, what, yeah, exactly. what's this because, you know, you've totally changed. Yep. You know, you've yeah, totally I mean, changed. It's funny, man. It's, uh, it's one of those things like – the same thing my family my family knows I do keto they see the transformation I've had and uh, you know they, they at first they would make fun of me you know mm -hmm. kind of eat the carbs in front of me and like oh Logan is this keto is this <laughs> joking around yeah, like you know yeah. it's family it's but we're at you know family gatherings and they're like hey Logan is this keto eating rice and beans and, and bread and all that but now it's like yeah I come around they're like so yeah like, tell me a little bit more like so what can't I have like, you yeah. know they kind of yeah. dive in a little bit more but yeah no it's, it's funny it's one of those things um, you know, with keto, you can't 
force anybody to do keto. No. They have to make that choice on their own. And I mean, I've been doing keto for going on five years and my wife has just started to do keto. Mm -hmm. And so for all my married couples that are listening right now and watching this live, the best way to get your spouse to not do something is to recommend it, okay? Yeah. So there's no way I could have recommended my wife to do keto because she would be like, what, what do you mean I need to keto? You're telling me I need to lose weight? Uh-uh, just for that, I'm about to eat some pasta. You know, <laughs> that, that's how it is, right? Yeah. And so um, she, she finally decided to do keto on her own, made that decision, and I'm, I'm like, I'm here for you. Like, I'm an open book. Like, I can coach you. I can help you out. And it's cool, man. It's cool. Like you said, for people listening and you're trying to get your wife, your husband, your son, your daughter, your mom, your dad to do keto, you have to understand that they have to make that decision on their own. You cannot force it. And mm -hmm. when you're ready, just be an open book for them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think my training and in, in, with coaching with, with keto it, um, has gotten better because I was at that mindset too. Um, and I've kind of put myself where the people I train now, you know, I was overweight and stuff, and I was like, okay, how am I going to break through this hurdle and start start the process? Yeah. You know, because there's a lot of people that are just they don't want to give up those carbs. They don't want to give them up. You know. Yeah, and one thing I want to say, one thing I want to say, I want to make a big point because I do talk about this a lot on my channel, on my Instagram. Look, I'm a huge advocate of the ketogenic diet, but I also know that it's not for everybody. Yes. Like, and there's nothing wrong with that. Like, mm -hmm. if like if keto doesn't work for you, it's all good. Like, mm -hmm. just find what works for you. And 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 another thing, if you do do keto. And it does work for you, but you're miserable. Mm -hmm. I would recommend stop. Like life is too short. Remember, like life always comes before anything. Like yep. diet. Like I don't even consider myself that I do the ketogenic diet. That's just it's a lifestyle, right? Like that's just the way I eat. When people see the way I eat, and they're like, "Oh yeah, you're doing the keto." I'm like, uh, I, I, "Yeah, I guess you can call it that." But no, this is just kind of this way I eat, right? This yeah. is just what I what I do. It's just normal to me. Same thing for working out. You know, people are like, "Yo, I want to work out." Okay, so go work out. Do you brush your teeth in the morning? Yes, I brush your teeth. Okay, well then make it a routine. Like, like everybody knows at five, well I used to go at five o'clock before I had two kids. When you have kids, things change. <laughs> but before I had kids, everybody knew at five o'clock I'd be at the gym. They wouldn't even ask me like, if they were gonna ask me to do something and they're like, if it's around five, they're like, oh no, I'm not gonna ask Logan because I know he's gonna be there. Like, yeah. Same thing, like you go to work every morning, I go to the gym every day, I make it a habit. Same thing with keto. But at the end of the day, I also know that keto is not for everybody and there's nothing wrong with that. So you gotta find what, what fits your lifestyle, whether that's paleo, vegan, low fat, high fat, what, whatever quote unquote diet you wanna do, just find what fits your lifestyle. And, if, and, and as long as it's healthier than making the bad decisions that you were doing, then it's totally okay. Like, yeah, yeah. So that that's one thing I, I preach a lot on my channel. Uh -oh. We got a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> that's one thing that I preach a lot on my channel, man, is that I understand that keto is not for everybody, and I don't want people to just think like, oh, well, I don't do keto, so I can't mess with Logan. No, yes, you can. Yeah. You can mess with me, man, because are, are you a happy person? Do you, do you want to spread positive vibes? Then, yes, then you can mess with me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, absolutely. <laughs> you know, and that, I, I train NFL guys. Um, you know, I, I work with college basketball players and all that during the summertime and stuff so you know I have Myler Flex and I've been you know meshing the keto world and then my athletic training and then my, my people that compete with yeah. you know figure and bodybuilding and all that stuff and so finally last week um, I finally said you know what I'm going to branch out and I'm going to split my Myler Flex and I, was, I started a new page called uh, Fit Keto Cowboy you know I'm, I'm a country boy from Missouri 49 people in my high school class wow. small small class all right um, so I'm now the Fit Keto Cowboy on Instagram, and and that is uh, for the people that just are diehard keto that want you know that love it. That's I'm I'm gearing you know I'm, I'm pushing people to, to follow me on yeah. there on that page um, because like some of my guys that are in the NFL that I train, they aren't going to do keto. Yeah, you know they 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 aren't keto. Now I will say. Depending on the position that they're in, or that they play, some of them are doing kind of that that paleo keto style, mm -hmm. you know, just kind of like LeBron James. Because again, I go back into more of the performance of it. Yeah, you know, it wasn't until like really the last six months that I've even worried about. Okay, I've got a good separation between my delts and and, and you know biceps, and now I'm starting to get my rhomboids. Yeah, you know, really you, know, you know, I'm really focusing on that now. Yeah, I never have my whole life, and so now I'm older. I've got a fracture back I can't play basketball like I used to 
do. So this is a new little challenge for me. I'm like, okay, now I'll, ch- I'll try to change my body. Yeah. But before that, um, you know, it's always been about, you know, your performance. How well are you doing it? How well are you doing it? And so uh, that's why I have, you know, my Myler Flex page and, um, you know, with Next Rep and our, our, you know, sports training and that, that whole deal. But I'm totally, if you're going to ask me what avenue should I go first, I'm going to go keto. Yeah. I, I, I totally am. I'm going to go. That's that's direction. The studies that have come out, yeah. both, you know, before it was for like the, for the epilepsy. medical and epilepsy. Yeah. yeah, it started in 1934. A guy yeah. won the Nobel Peace Prize yeah. with I it. Know. I know. Such a people quiet, don't know that. People don't know. Yeah, and so. You know, it, it's been in the industry for so long, but now in the last two or three years, it's really getting more into the to athletic sport performance. Cross, that, like there's a whole CrossFit scene that's yeah, going into I think it. Yeah, one of the biggest questions I got uh, in the beginning is when people were thinking about doing keto. It's like, yo, will I have enough energy with CrossFit? Yes, like, yes, you will. Now you got to understand. In the beginning, when your body is making that transfer from glucose to ketones, yep. you're going to feel miserable. You're going to feel like crap, but there's nothing wrong with that. That means you're doing the right thing. That means you're, you, you're doing everything right. Your body is now transferring. So that during that transfer, that transformation or that transfer uh, of getting pro- fat adapted, yeah, getting fat adapted, yeah, your workout's going to feel like crap. Don't give up because yeah. so many people are like, oh, man, this, th- see, this is exactly what I was talking about. This is, this is keto is not for me. I hear I that all the time. It's like, dude, if you just would have kept going, kept, you would have got fat adapted and your, your workouts would have been just the same, if not better, better. when yeah. you're on carbs. Yeah. And your recovery. Uh, that's the other thing I've, I've noticed, just the recovery of, mm-hmm. of, of, you know, having the ketones and having that extra leucine and all that stuff is just, it, it, it's, it's yeah, awesome. There's, there's many, benefits. yeah, look, and keto is one of those things like keto, everybody always wants to associate keto with weight loss and I get it, you know, yeah. everybody wants to lose weight, but there's so many more benefits to mm-hmm. keto. Like there's just so much mental clarity, inflammation, battling type two diabetes, CPOS, like, you know, just so much stuff, even anxiety, like, you know, yep. just, there's so much that it, it, it can do. And, um, you know, I want to, I want to touch back on one thing that you said earlier, um, when you were like, kind of like trial and error, right? Mm-hmm. So when, when you do keto, understand that there is no right and wrong way. I mean, yes, there's, there's a, there's, there's a guideline to do it, right? But you got to find what works for you. For some people, they can get away with higher protein. Like I have a good, good buddy named Danny Vega. If you don't know who Danny Vega is, oh, yeah. he's, he's like my brother. And the guy can eat 300 grams of protein and still be in ketosis. Yeah. It's insane, right? It's insane because he's totally flipping the myth where don't go over 20% of protein yeah. Yeah. or you're going to be kicked out of ketosis. It's going to turn into muscle. It's going to turn into glyc- uh, glycogen, you know, yeah. uh, gluconeogenesis, you know, yeah, gluconeogenesis. and he's just like, dude, watch me eat 300 and test my ketones, I, test my glucose. Yeah. And everything is like keto level. So there's tons of studies that are showing that, Hey, we're, we're too crazy about the protein. We're product. way too crazy, way too concerned. But at the end of the day, find what works for you. So like me, like I've, I've been doing keto for five and a half years and I'm still experimenting. Yeah. Like I'm still like doing targeted keto. I'm trying out car- targeted keto. I, I've tried refi days, carb cycling, you know, strict therapeutic keto, you know, maybe just, you just got to try things. And, and, and I, love trial and error because those are the best learning experiences mm-hmm. so like when people are like so logan like what's your what's your educational background you know because you see you see a lot of people in the keto industry with you know their doctors they got you know education and all this stuff it's like dude my education is experience like yeah. trial and error are my greatest tools like i'm not scared to fail because if i fail then i just learn something new mm-hmm. and that's how i look at everything whether it's keto training life like i'm not scared to fail like yeah. i don't care like I want to start a podcast. I'm going to start a podcast. And if it just goes, crashes down, cool. I learned something. At least you know. Yeah, at least I know. So one thing I really want to preach to the people listening to this is whatever you want to do, whether that's YouTube, keto, fitness, go to school, chase your passion, chase your dream, whatever you want to do, do not be scared of failure. The worst thing that can happen is you, you, you fell, but you learned something, right? It's like there, you just cannot be scared of fail. Well, I need to take your advice because I'm doing t- I'm doing targeted keto right now. Uh-huh. I've done that before, had great results, loved it. Um, I'm doing that. I'm, I'm taking about 40 grams of carbs before my workout. I was going to, and I, I didn't do it. I was going to do cyclical, and yeah. it just it made me you know 200 to 400 grams of carbs once or twice a week. I was just like. 
I'm not there yet. But you know what? Maybe maybe I should just go try ahead. Try it out, and, man. Just tr- I mean, <laughs> what's the worst that going to happen? What's the worst, man? huh? Come on, man. What's the worst going to happen? You learn if it works. It either doesn't or it doesn't yeah. work. And then you move on from there. And then you take that knowledge with you to your next client, right? You're like, yeah. well, hey, buddy. Well, when I did this, this is what happened. So you, you always are constantly learning. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah man. Just... You can't be scared of failure, man. That's one thing. And, and you went to the Gary Vanderchuk. I, I mean, that's one of his biggest things. It's like, dude, F fear. Like, yep, don't be scared yep. of fear. Like, that's why so many people don't succeed in, in life and in, in, in whatever they want to do because they're so scared about what their friends are going to say. They're so scared about what their, what, what, what their, you know, their relatives are going to say. And look, I'll tell you this right now, guys. I've been doing YouTube for four and a half years, and it's finally, finally, finally paying off, right? But I was 26 years old picked up a vlogging camera and so many people made fun of me yeah they're like dude what are you doing you're 26 years old why are you vlogging like that's a young man's game that's a kid's game you're a child what are you doing you need to focus on your career i didn't listen to them all right i didn't care what my friend said and yes i lost friends but it's so so funny those same friends are messaging me like dude i see what you're doing i saw your yeah. ice cream i saw your keto meal i saw this and you're going here you're going there like that's awesome like do you have time for lunch like it's meet up like it's funny I, right I, how it come full circle so don't be scared of of what people are going to say don't be scared of what people think do you we have one life to live you better make the best of it because there's no guarantee that you're going to be here tomorrow so you better put a hundred and ten percent in whatever you want to do whatever your passion is whatever your love is look i was very grateful to have a nine to five job i'm very blessed to have a job but it wasn't what I love to do. Yeah. It wasn't my passion. I didn't wake up every morning like, man, I cannot wait to go and just fix this AC unit. I cannot <laughs> wait to fix this this toilet. I cannot wait to fix this this light. Right. Yeah. Very blessed to have the job, but it wasn't what I what I love to do. And the, and, and the best way to answer the question to find out if you're doing what you love, if money wasn't an option, if money wasn't a thing, mm-hmm. would you be doing what you're doing today? Yeah. Okay. And the answer to me for me was no. You know what I'd be doing? Filming and documenting my time with my family. Mm-hmm. I love my family. I love spending time with my and family. And you're bringing them in on, the, on oh, all dude, your stuff it, now. It, it, it's, it's a dream come true. Yeah. It is an absolute dream come true. So me and my wife get to wake up in the morning and say, hey, what do you want to do today? You want to go to Whole Foods, do a shopping video for keto? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Or you, hey, you want to do a recipe? I saw this really cool recipe on Pinterest. Let's do it, babe. Yeah. And we film it and we document it. And that's what I would be doing no matter what. Like, I get to do what I love for a living. But understand that it didn't happen overnight. Mm-hmm. It took four and a half years of hard work of making YouTube videos, putting yourself out there. And when you put yourself out there, all you're doing is just putting yourself out there for criticism. You're just saying, hey, everybody, judge me. Like, yeah. and, and yes, it is tough in the beginning and it's hard, but I promise you, if, if it's something that you love, then it doesn't feel like work. Like, I love making YouTube videos. If you guys don't follow me on YouTube, like, I love editing. Like, mm-hmm. I love making dope oh, videos, man, that drone, a moody time music. Time consuming. It's, dude, five to six hours is what, what it takes for me to edit oh, a yeah. video. It, 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 a vlog of, like, you know, yeah. with, with, that's really high quality. Yeah. But I love doing that. And I, I don't care if I wasn't getting paid or whatever. It's what I love to do. I love that my daughter will be able to get older and her kids, because I know YouTube's gonna be around for a long time. I just, I oh, YouTube's yeah. the future. So I think it's just so cool that my daughter gets to grow up and say, like, Dad, like, let me go see what we did when you, I was a baby, and she gets to go see everything we've done, and it's just something that that that's just so cool to me. And her daughter or her son will get to go do, will get to go see, like, hey, you want to see how my dad was 20 years ago? Here's his YouTube video. Like, yeah. yeah. Uh, so and I, w- I wish I would have been progressive like you, and and you know, I'm 38 years old, so there's a little bit of an age gap. Dude, you're still young dude age is just a number don't give me that but no but what i'm saying is just the the mind process of how you would market and everything yeah you know i did the old school stuff i was out on the streets passing out flyers giving my business cards everywhere you know that i never thought about going to youtube to really get get the word out about anything i just really spoke to the people that were in front of me you know that type of deal so now i'm doing it now i'm in starbucks and i've got my camera and you know i'm (laughs) vlogging and all this stuff and now you were doing when you were 26 i'm doing now i'm 38 i'm like the old guy but yeah so dude you just gotta just do it man like i said every i I know why you why you think it's weird because you you're just afraid what people think right yeah what's this older guy like doing like yeah First of all, you're not old. Okay, <laughs> no. you're only as old as you think. No, you are, I and totally as old as you that. feel, right? Yeah. So, like, man, yeah. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me tell you a story. Just because something I really want to let people know that are listening to this and who have never 
met me don't know my story. So I quit my nine to five job in October, which was a, I worked for local government, you know, good salary, good insurance, good retirement, right? Everything's safe, yeah. safety net, right? Like you, every, that's what everybody does nowadays. Everybody does the safe route, like whatever's safe. Like, yeah, I don't love what I do. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not very happy. Yeah, I'm miserable, but it's safe, yeah. right? And so I quit my job in October and I had my first child in November, a month later. Okay, my wife and my parents were like, they were very concerned, but they also believed in me. They were like, look, mm -hmm. they were like, okay, look, this is what you want to do. We we got your back, but just are you are you sure this is this is this is it? Because yeah. you're you're gonna have a child. Like, yeah. You need to understand that you're gonna have to go to hospital bills. You're gonna have to you know. There's so much, and I'm like, I, this is what I want to do. I will make it work. I promise. Fast forward, we're going on a year and a half. So in October, we'll reach two years. My wife has now quit her job. Oh wow! Stay home watching watching the. Well, we we we're a family vlog. Yeah, yeah. We're, we, we 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 get to do what we love. Like, yeah. So. It's, it's it's like, man, when people are telling me, like, man, I'm too old for this, I'm too old, like, dude, you're nobody's too old. Just find what your passion is, and you better put in 110%, all right? And also, that's the tight-knit group of the keto community that oh, I man, was I talking about them. before I that I've, I've gotten experience. Dude, the keto, there's, noth there's no better group out there than the keto community. Like, there's so much love. So that's one thing. Like, my wife, if you would have told me a year ago that my wife was going to do YouTube with me, I would have laughed. Because anytime I brought the camera, like, all right, here's the camera. Chris will be like, no peace, and like walk yeah. out. Like she's like, I'm not getting on cameras. I hate hearing my voice on 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 when you're editing. Like, yeah, yeah, she's yeah. just like anti-camera. She's just very shy. Like she's you know, and and I get it. Like it, it's all good. Like not everybody can just get a camera and just start vlogging, right? It, yeah. it does. It does get time to get used to. Uh, and she started coming around like kind of slowly, like you know, making her way on the vlog. But what has helped her is the positive comments the positive mm -hmm. vibes from the keto community everybody just like messaging her like supporting her get showing her love i mean and she I, has her own little page now dude she, she changed that on her own yeah like, i did not like people probably think like oh logan like you probably told your wife to change it to a keto like dude <laughs> she's done everything on her own that's and, awesome and like said so you get confidence from from people like so Trust me, if, if you best believe if people were like, yo, Crystal, like, that's whack, like, giving her a hard time, yo, she would shut down, quick, she yeah. would shut down like that. Me, that would motivate me, like, that's fire, like, I'm like, oh, you're going to tell me I, I can't do something? Yeah. Like, watch, oh, here I go. Yeah. But for her, like, you know, she's very, like, she's in her shell, right? So all the positive comments from the keto community and all the support has really pushed her and kept her going. Mm -hmm. Like, it's been amazing, man, it's been amazing. So my wife started keto while she was pregnant. Okay. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was it was funny because like every single comment was like, oh my god, is keto safe? Is it safe? Is yeah. it safe? Is it safe? And I'm and I'm kind of like jokingly, I'm like, okay. Well, let me tell you what my wife was eating before, and nobody questioned it. Nobody yeah. batted an eye. It was Starbucks Trenta Macchiato, which is just packed with sugar. A Starbucks banana nut bread, and then she would get home cereal and a banana, and then pasta for dinner, and then spaghetti and and, and ramen for for you know just just crap right yeah but nobody batted an eye nobody questioned it but the minute she switched from steak and eggs bunless burger you know salmon what? people are like oh my god is yeah. that safe it's, it's funny but but it's not their fault right it's just like we're so brainwashed in this industry right yeah and um when you switch things up whenever you change things like people kind of freak out right mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um yeah it just, it just the keto community is just amazing man. exactly so much love exactly so guy question where do you see the future of keto going? Uh, I, I really see it just exploding. So I, this is what I feel. This is this is only, I've said this plenty of times. Keto is one major celebrity away from becoming the most popular, like whatever quote unquote diet there is out there. So when I say this, I'm waiting for the rock to to give the ketogenic diet credit. Like I'm ready for because be nice. I, I almost feel Halle Berry does. Yeah, she does. Yeah. Yeah. I feel that The Rock, and this is just me because I watch him. Who doesn't love The Rock? Yeah, right? I love I The Rock. Him. And he does those epic reefy days, right? Yeah. He calls them cheat days. All that sushi but they, and But stuff. they look like reefy days. But he doesn't show the other stuff. Because I bet you anything, it's a high-fat, low-carb diet. Mm -hmm. Monday through through Saturday. And then on Sundays, he has his refeed day. I guarantee he's doing some type of keto 
style of diet, low carb yeah. diet, and I, I feel like the ketogenic diet is one major celebrity away from endorsing it. And uh, and when I mean endorsing, I'm not trying to say, like make money off it. Just saying like, yeah, like this is what I do. Like, this I, this I, is real. Yeah, this is real. This works. Yeah. And because that's that's the type of society we are. Like we always have to wait for a celebrity to acknowledge it. Right? And this is it, it is what it is. But um, it, it's here to stay. It isn't going anywhere. It's not a fad diet. It, it, there's science is getting backed up by it now. Research is getting backed up by 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 it now. There's so many doctors, uh, so many people with you know credentials that are coming out. You know, mm -hmm. it's 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 one thing when it's just us, right? Like it's just me. Like, hey, I, look, I, I was overweight. I did keto. I lost seventy pounds. Here's my story. Mm -hmm. And. But it's different when like a doctor comes out, like Dr. Ken Berry comes out, yeah. and, 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 and he's in Dr. Dr. Ryan Lowry, and they're just breaking it down, you know, yeah. like why it works and the benefits. So, and also like Brent Osborne, and you know, there's uh, yeah. I mean, there's lots of um, you know doctors out there that are doing yeah. it. So, with that being said, talking about the future, if you guys have been listening to the podcast before and you've been seeing a lot of my posts on Myler Flex, I've said that I have a really big announcement. And I've been waiting till today to actually say, hey, this is what's happening. Here's what we're doing. Actually, I see one of my people that, that's going to be a part of this on, on live on, on uh, Myler Flex right now. I want to announce, because of all the studies with keto and also with the people out there that still put their, you know, nose up to keto and don't believe in it and since the community is so tight i think keto needs another another push another reason to not just do it for weight loss but let's go to that next level let's see what you can really do and what your body can do yep and so i'm officially announcing today that i am starting naca the national athletic keto association now what this is is it's going to be the first of its kind it's going to hold it's kind of like if you guys follow npc or something like that where people are doing bodybuilding shows figure physique that's what this is going to be for the ketogenic athlete okay this is we're launching live today this is going to be the first day of naca you can actually go on the instagram page look at national athletic keto association naka and with that being said i am super 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 excited that our first ambassador is going to be my man goody beats right here yes yes yeah. dude i'm honored and, and and you and i talked about this earlier in the gym dude it's it's time yes it's time to do this and i'm so honored and grateful to be on board uh like i said man we're gonna we're gonna blow this up this yes. is gonna be cool it, it's just bringing more awareness out right? absolutely and, absolutely uh, and, and, and education and, and about the ketogenic diet so dude i'm excited we got some big big plans for the future so yes. like, everybody be on the lookout make sure you follow them on instagram and uh stay tuned stay tuned i hope you guys are ready yes be ready um the first show is actually going to be i'm going to host it at my gym it's going to be in dallas texas we are still finalizing the dates i'm thinking possibly the end of september or the beginning of october it's probably going to be right around there i don't want the show to uh, uh cross over any other shows now how we're going to do you might ask well how, how do you know that you're a keto person you know how, how do we know that you're stepping on stage and you're really keto so we're going to use the power of social media okay, okay you got this old guy trying to use social media so what we're going to do is once you've decided that you want to compete in these shows and we're going to put a lot more information over the next few weeks on the website but eight weeks prior to the show you guys are going to go live on Instagram and you guys are going to actually do a blood test to show that you are in ketosis, that you're at least a 0.5 or higher in ketosis. Because I do know the more intense your workouts are, the harder that you can keep. And even if you're a really long fat adapted athlete, the it's kind of hard to keep those ketones really spiked at yep. over 1.0 or 1.5 to yes, 2. So, you know, we want to stay at least at that at a 0.5 or higher. So that's what we're going to do. You have to be in ketosis the day of the show. Unfortunately, if you're not, I'm sorry, you can't compete. <laughs> you can't compete. Um, so anyways, this is, this is, I, I'm just super excited about doing this for the keto community. Also, the first show is going to be absolutely free. 
Like, there's not going to be any charge for the competitors. We're also going to have a select um, amount of vendors that are going to come out that are legit keto vendors, not just getting on the bandwagon, but people I've watched through the through the years um, and, and products that I take. So they're going to have free booths as well. This is going to be an absolute free event in Dallas. It's going to be the start of NACA, and then we're hoping in 2020 we're going to have three shows. Two of them we're going to accumulate points for, and then the last show is going to be the actual finals where we're going to have awards and all that good stuff. And um, I'm hoping, cross my fingers, that maybe we can have the show at something like a KetoCon, which that's still really early, but some type of a bigger uh, event that is a keto event that's somewhere in the United States. So that's the long-term uh, plan in the next year, but right now, Dallas, Texas, 2019, the first show, National Athletic Keto Association, Goody Beats is the new ambassador, and I, 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 I'm I so excited. I Dude, can't wait. Let's do it, man. Let's blow it up um so like i said i'm ready man yes I'm yes ready. yes go like i said go follow instagram national athletic keto association ask and and also um uh the website it's just national athletic keto association.com so man I think that's that was that, a mic dropper right there, bro. That was an absolute <laughs> mic dropper, bro. I hope they're ready. Their, their jaws are still. Uh, <laughs> Dude, uh, there, there's a guy out in Nashville. He just I put the I actually put together the Instagram page last uh, Saturday, mm -hmm. and I, I I haven't really said anything. I put a couple little things, join the movement, yeah. you know that type of deal out. And a, a guy out of Nashville, Tennessee, he saw it and he go he writes back. He goes, hmm, interesting. And he he's he said he was getting ready to do a show in November. And I just wrote back. It's like, yeah, man, you need to to do this. It's going to be in Dallas. And he goes, you know what? I'm coming. I'm Done. Wanting, so Done. I know we got at least one competitor. Yeah, yeah. Hey, <laughs> I think we're going to have a lot more coming yes, in sir. too. We will. We will definitely. Well, man, I am so happy and 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 grateful that you took time out to come meet me. Um, you know, I really try to uh, keep people in my circle like I said I, I don't I, I haven't been in the fitness world because it, there's a lot of people that are egocentric and aren't yes, positive are. yes, and just like are. just like my buddy actually my next tattoo is going to be another Justin Justin first and Phil lyric <laughs> nice, from man. Blue October nice and um, and in one of the before one of his songs he just says you know basically life is is short go mm -hmm. live that shit yep. and so yes, but before that he's saying get rid of all those negative people in your life you know get rid of all those negative people because life is too short dude that that, that he's he's a prophet <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> and so, and I, I joke i say that jokingly but because dude the biggest change i made in 2019 was to get rid of all the negative people in my life the, the people that just complain just just negative right yeah. you, and you know it man you you could be in such a good mood and then get around that one person that's just so negative and just yeah. talks and crap and this and you're just like dude get away from me yeah. negative yeah. vibes like i'm i know this sounds weird and cliche but i'm very big on like pop like vibes like vibes man like yeah. the energy energy man like when you're around someone with the with as much energy as you and positive vibes like dude everything's just flowing yeah you yeah. and i like dude we just met two hours ago <laughs> we feel like we're brothers yeah yeah absolutely but, man but i'm saying when you're around someone that's negative it could be like dude like man like let's yeah. get this let's wrap this up let's go man. And, and that's exactly the reason why I, I asked you you know not only because you're a keto person there's tons of keto people out there yeah. but you are the specific one because you you like i said number one when i think of goody beats positivity family keto fitness yeah. so Again, thank you so much for hey, being man, on the podcast, it, man. I appreciate it, man. All right. We're going to wrap this one up. Tomorrow, we got two podcasts coming on, the Myler Flex podcast. I've got Jason Whitrock, another big-time keto guy, and then another guy I just found out about myself on Monday. He goes by uh, the Keto Hulk. His name is Michael uh, Wilcoxon, and I got two of He's those tomorrow. Dude. He's such a good guy. I love that guy. Yeah, I am him, so I'm, I'm excited. He's a, he's a big guy. You know, I'm 6'6", 226, and he's told me he's 6'3", he's, he's a teddy bear. He's a teddy bear. He really is. <laughs> yeah. he's, a, he's a great guy. All right. Well, guys, have a great Friday. Enjoy your time. And till next time, keep repping and flexing. Hey, guys, do me a big favor. Go follow Milo Flex on Instagram and Facebook. And if you want more videos of the podcast or workout videos, 
follow the Myler Flexing Podcast on YouTube and hit that subscribe button. Till next time, keep rapping and flexing.